Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're gonna to take a deep dive into the safety of the GLP-1 agonists, or the new anti-obesity medications that we're hearing so much about. Medications like Wagovi, Zepbound, Terzepatide, and Somaglutide. I want to talk to y'all about an exciting systematic review that was published in Obesity Reviews a couple of months ago. This study looked at over 700 studies, but actually only chose seven that they felt like were high quality data, randomized controlled trials that specifically looked at semaglutide and terzepatide specifically for weight loss in patients that were obese or overweight with a BMI greater than or equal to 27 with a health condition related to obesity. And they needed to use this medication for at least a year. They looked at side effects of the medications and that's what I'm gonna focus on today. This study is, was really well done, lots and lots of good data and really interesting data too. And they started off by saying that liraglutide, also known as Victosa or Saxenda, was actually approved for diabetes in 2014. And I remember talking about Victosa with patients 10 years ago. Semaglutide was then approved for obesity in 2021, and terzepatide was approved for diabetes in 2022, and then approved for obesity in 2023. So as a class, this medication has been around for about 10 years. Let's start with the studies that specifically focused on semaglutide which is the GLP-1 agonist that can be used for diabetes and as an anti-obesity medication. This systematic review looked at all of the STEP trials and included about 2,100 patients. The average total body weight loss was about 15% in patients that used semaglutide. 91% of patients using semaglutide had some form of a side effect, but before you get too concerned, 89% of patients that were using placebo also had some mention of a side effect. Let's go through this chart together. So as I mentioned before, patients that were using semaglutide, 91% of the people reported some side effect versus 89% on placebo. So not much difference there. The most common side effects were gastrointestinal and included nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and constipation. This occurred more often in the semaglutide group than the placebo. Let's look at each one separately so you can really see the numbers and the difference between them. So nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, 26% with the semaglutide group versus 7% with placebo, constipation, 26% versus 13%, headache, 16% in the semaglutide group versus 12% in the placebo group. Overall, 6% of patients taking semaglutide discontinued the medication, presumably because of side effects, and 3% discontinued the placebo due to side effects. And although serious side effects did occur, and we saw 10% of patients taking semaglutide versus 7% of patients taking placebo had some sort of serious side effect. Well, what are some of the serious side effects that were reported? Gallbladder disease like gallstones, 3% of that occurred in patients taking semaglutide versus 1% with placebo. And we know patients that lose weight can have more issues with their gallbladder. That can be seen actually after bariatric surgery and a relatively common side effect of bariatric surgery is needing to have your gallbladder taken out. Other serious side effects also were seen but had pretty small differences between placebo and semaglutide, but let's look at those numbers. Pancreatitis, which is really a problematic side effect, didn't occur very often. Three patients out of 2,124.1% had pancreatitis that used semaglutide versus no patients that were using placebo. Severe low blood sugars, renal failure, cancer, psychiatric disorders, allergic reactions, and injection site reactions were about the same between semaglutide and placebo groups. But what was really exciting was that cardiovascular events such as a heart attack and stroke occurred less often in patients in the semaglutide group versus the placebo group, which is really exciting and was also supported by the SELECT trial, which I've mentioned before on this channel. Okay, now let's move to the terzepatide group. 
Now this group just included two studies from the surmount trials and it had about 900 patients. The average total body weight loss for the terzepatide group was about 20%. And let's look at the chart with numbers specifically for these trials so we can really compare the data. Okay, so 82% of patients using terzepatide versus 74% of patients with placebo had at least one adverse side effect. And just like semaglutide, the most common side effects were nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, and headache. Let's look at those specific numbers and you can see that 34% of patients taking terzepatide had nausea versus 11% with placebo, 26% had diarrhea versus 8% in the placebo group, 14% with terzepatide had nausea versus 2% in placebo, constipation 15% versus 6%, and headaches was equal between the two groups. These studies also reported serious side effects and unlike semaglutide, there really wasn't any difference between the gallbladder disease that they saw between the two groups. There was no difference in pancreatitis, kidney failure, cancer, psychiatric disorders, allergic reactions, and major adverse cardiovascular events. But unlike semaglutide, there were more injection site reactions with terzepatide, 7% versus 0.5% and slightly more episodes of severe low blood sugar or hypoglycemia, 1% versus 0.1%. Okay, well, what about gastroparesis or intractable nausea and vomiting? You know, they didn't mention that in these studies. And I have to say, in my personal experience, if you titrate these medications slowly and you're working with a doctor that understands how to use these medications, I don't have problems with that. So the patients or the people that you hear about on TikTok or in the news, they are not getting these medications from a reputable doctor who knows how to use these medications correctly. Well, what about thyroid cancer? This initial concern was based on studies done in rats. And in this systematic review, we did not see an increased incidence of cancer thyroid or any other type. But I want to just caution people that, you know, this study only followed people for about a year or two. Do we, we have some data based on liraglutide that was started back in 2014. And overall, I'm reassured, but I have a very specific conversation with people and ask them if they have a family history of thyroid cancer or if they have had a personal history of thyroid cancer. And if so, I do not start this medication. As I mentioned before, this systematic review was really well done, but I do have some concerns about it. Overall, I felt like the number of studies that were included was pretty low and it just really followed the select trials and the surmount trials. It was also funded by Nova Nordisk, the maker of semaglutide, which I don't love that. The longest studies studied people for just a year to two years. And overall, because there were a relatively small number of patients just in general in these studies, the number of side effects reported was overall pretty small. But at the end of the day, every particular person needs to make a risk benefit analysis of medication just in general. For me, obesity untreated is a huge risk factor for so many things like cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure, cancers, reduced quality of life, and a reduced life expectancy. So not treating your obesity also has risks. I've mentioned before, these medications are not for the casual dieter. These medications are for patients that have struggled with their weight and have tried lifestyle modifications and have not been successful at keeping the weight off. I think these medications are safe and if they're used under the advisement of someone trained, I think patients can be successful with them. If you like the content on this channel, please be sure to like and subscribe and comment. I do read the comments and I'm happy to answer any questions that some of you may have. Thanks for joining me.